Hello Underachievers, just want to start off this video by saying I'm sorry I only posted once last week. I've been ill, I've been going through some stuff, I just needed a break, but I'm back. Still ill. I'm guessing you've read the title by now, but yeah, today's video is about binding, it's about binders, it's about binding. If you don't know what binding is, it's just a method of flattening your chest. Uh, for people who are assigned female at birth, they have, you know, some tissue there and they might want to flatten it. Usually this is done by trans guys or non-binary people who are assigned female at birth who just want to have a flat chest. But sometimes it's also used by people who just, you know, like the look of a flat chest. They don't, they don't have dysphoria, they just want a flat chest. I remember a few years ago I had so many issues with that, but then I realized that a lot of binders that people use today were actually not designed for trans people. They were just designed for cis men who have you know, too much breast tissue. Don't really see an issue with people wanting to flatten their chest. They could be doing it for cosplay, or it could just be because they like the look of a flat chest. So I have had top surgery, which means I've had my titties removed. Um, lucky me. <laughs> Haven't really posted a chest update in a while, but I had my surgery January the 7th, 2019, so it's been about nine months, and I'm very happy with how my chest looks. But also recently, I, I realized that I haven't worn a binder in so long. And when I'm talking about binders, I don't mean the post-op binder that I used after I had my surgery. For those of you that don't know, after you've had top surgery, it's pretty common for people to wear post-op binders. They're like medical binders that, you know, just, just compress your chest to make sure that swelling goes down and to keep everything together. My post-op binder was very different to the binder I used before I had surgery. I was thinking recently and I forgot how it felt to bind. I forgot that, you know, that was something that I did every day. The first thing I'd do in the morning was get up, put my binder on, and then I'd worry about everything else. It was really weird for me after surgery and after I stopped wearing the uh, post-op binder to not have that part of my routine. Like, I would put a t-shirt on and leave the house and feel weird, and I I'd feel like I'm missing something. I was, I was missing my titties. But I was also like, I, I, I felt so exposed because I just wasn't wearing this thing that I wore every day for so many years. I definitely do not miss anything about having a binder or wearing a binder. I am so grateful that I don't have to do that every day. I've asked you guys to ask me some questions about binding and I will get to them in a second. Don't worry, I'll try and, you know, give out all the information. But for now, I thought it would be a cool idea to try on a binder and see how different it feels than before. Obviously, it will feel very different. So at my last meetup, somebody who had just had top surgery had, uh, they, they gave me these binders to give away. And I will be giving these binders away, do not worry, I'm not just hoarding them, I, I just wanted to make this video and then, you know, I'm gonna pick two people from the UK who need a binder, um, these are both size small, so if you're from the UK and you're a size small binder, DM me. Also, these are Underworks and GC2B binders, so if you don't know what size you are, then look on the websites and it should tell you. But yeah, onto the binder trying. So, these are actually the right size for me before surgery, I'm pretty sure I've gotten a lot broader since before I had surgery, um, so I don't know if these will fit, but, you know, let's try it. Obviously, I had to take my hat off, and I know my hair is bad, I am trying to grow it out, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, so just, just deal with it. Also, to take my top off, that makes sense. So, if you bind regularly, you'll know that there's a certain technique to putting on a binder and taking off a binder. Don't know how you guys put on your binders, but this is how I used to put mine on. So this was the right size. Will it fit? Now, who knows? So I put it over my shoulders, and then over my head. Oh my god. <coughs> <coughs> so this is usually the part that sucks the most. It hurts a lot, and as you can see, the back, the back is <laughs> so rolled up. <coughs> you have to reach around and get it, and then unroll it, and then out. <coughs> there we go. Got the binder on. <laughs> so. This is an odd feeling because, uh, like, oh, there would always be pressure around the bottom, which is where there is pressure now, but there used to be more pressure around the top, obviously, because I had titties. <coughs> this is a lot tighter than it used to be, though. <laughs> so this is an Underworks binder. They were my favorite binders. I just feel like they bind the best. They are very tight. Um, they're actually made for cis guys that had gynecomastia. Gynecomastia? One of them, um, they had extra breast tissue and it was to flatten them. But yeah, these ones probably hurt a lot more than GC2B, but I prefer them. Um, they rub under here, and under here, and on here, and here. They, they rub a lot, but they, they keep you flat good. Um, obviously, this is just for my body type. These are just my favourites. So that was the Underworks one, and this is how I used to take my binders off, I think. You just roll this up, and then get behind. Jesus Christ. <coughs> Yay! So that was the Underworks binder. This will be... This, is, this will be given away. I promise I haven't stretched it out. So the next binder is the GC2B. Now these are a lot softer. These are made by trans people for trans people. So if that's what you want to, you know, invest in, then that's what you can do. Personally, I didn't like these ones as much. They were comfortable, but they didn't bind as well because the back is 
pretty flexible. As you could, that burden is literally like rubbed. So let's put the GC2B on. Um, this should be easier, I think. Same approach, arms in, over the head. Oh, this is so much easier, okay. So this is a GC2B. This is fine. This feels fine. GC2B are a lot comfier. Not got much to say about that. There you go. Take it off. Easy. Easy, okay. There we go. That under works really did me day. So yeah, that sucked. And if you don't know, binding sucks. I only wore that for like a minute each and I already like feel gross. Shout out to all those people that wear binders on the regular. I, I, I know how terrible it is. I feel terrible that you still have to go through that, but no. One day, maybe you won't. So you guys actually had a lot of questions about binders and binding, which is fair enough, because I know a lot of trans guys and non-binary people do that. So let's get on to them. What tips do you have for working out and wanting to bind? So I'm not gonna lie to you, when I binded, I did not exercise. And when I did exercise, I didn't wear a binder because I was at school and I was not out. And I would feel weird, you know, one day having, 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 a, having a lump there and the next day not having it. But what I do remember experiencing is that every time I tried to run and I was wearing a binder, I would get out of breath so quick and it would take Takes so long for me to recover from that. I would also start coughing and wheezing. It just it, it wasn't good. Realistically, I would recommend not exercising a binder. If you can, maybe wear a sports bra that is loose or a sports bra that is tight. So you know, can kind of bind because that's you know, sports bras kind of bind it better than normal bras. But if you have to bind while exercising, I would recommend going a size up. Don't want to be exercising with the full on ooh, full on tight stuff. It's actually really dangerous and it feels really, really terrible. Has your way of breathing changed now you don't have to bind anymore? Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. It's so weird, I can't really explain it very well. So, pretty much, when you're wearing a binder, because it's so tight, you can't take a full breath. I mean, at least in my experience, I wore binders that were that tight. I could never take a full breath. Like, I'd breathe in, and it wouldn't be like, it, it, it wouldn't really satisfy the need for oxygen. Because I wore it so long for so many years, every day, pretty much the whole day, that's just how I learned to breathe. I, I learned to breathe differently because I was wearing that. Now, since having surgery, the way I realized that I breathed different was that I went on a run for the first time, and Jesus Christ, that was so difficult. Because I was so not used to having this much lung space that I would try and take a full breath, but it would be too overwhelming. Like, I, I'd breathe in, I'd be like, that's too much. And when I needed as much air as I needed, it was difficult for me to know how much to breathe in and breathe out. And obviously breathing is very important when you're exercising, you need you need oxygen. Um, It was very different. I think, I think it's getting better now. I haven't been binding for like eight months, I guess. I can still feel the effects of binding, I'm not gonna lie, um, with the way I breathe, because I, I breathe weird. Opinion on KT tape and binding. Um, to be honest, I am not a fan of KT tape. I tried it a few times, and obviously when I tried it, um, I overdid it. Because my goal was to become as flat as possible, and with KT tape, that's not necessarily a thing that's gonna happen, unless you really tape it down, in which case, taking it off, it's not safe, I just... <laughs> when you try and move your arms, the tape pulls your skin. It pulled my skin off, I've got scars on my back and scars on my front from where the KT tape ripped off my skin. I know some people that have got stretch marks now because of the KT tape, they would wear it every day, they'd wear it morning and night, and it's it just not, it's not safe. If the aim of wearing KT tape is to just cover your nipples, um, that's fine. Maybe put a bit of stuff under the KT tape because ripping off a nipple is not... It doesn't sound good. KT tape is not a good form of binding, I don't think, because the aim... <sighs> the aim of binding should be to get as flat as possible, but with KT tape, that's just dangerous. Do people bind every day or only days when dysphoria is bad? Personally, I would bind every day for as long as possible, um, because my dysphoria was that bad. But also, I know people with bad dysphoria don't bind every day because they'd rather, you know, feel comfortable. <laughs> Physically at least. It really depends on the person. Everybody's different. Their binding technique and their binding Schedule is different. How do you stop your back hurting? So if you didn't know binding hurts your back muscular stuff feel cramped and horrible And to be honest the ways I stopped my back hurting was I would just stretch so much all the time. Could have done with a massage, to be honest. If you can get a massage, get a massage. Have you experienced side effects that have followed you even post-op? Uh, I did just talk about that, but yes, I have. I had a terrible posture for months. I think it's gotten better now, but I had a terrible posture because the binder would kind of squeeze my body together, and also because I was self-conscious about there being a bump, um, I would, I would, I would, I would walk like this and I'd stand like this. The breathing thing is a thing, yeah, the, it, it sucks, but I think maybe some point I won't feel like that. How old was I when I started binding? I think I was 15. So I binded for about four years. Any, 
<laughs> Any recommendations for what binders to get? So, when I was binding, um, the two most popular binders were GC2B and Underworks. Uh, my preference is Underworks because although it's not as comfortable, I feel like it binds better, at least for people with my body type. GC2B, uh, it stretches out quite quickly, it would get loose, and I wouldn't really feel like I was binding, I just felt like it was a loose sports bra that was not trying hard enough. Now, I know there's a new binding company, um, I think it's UK-based, but they're called Spectrum, uh, I think. Am I? Am I right? Yes, they're called Spectrum Outfitters, and I've heard they're kind of like GC2Bs, they look like GC2Bs, and I've heard people say that they bind worse, or they bind better than GC2Bs, so I, I, I don't really have an opinion on that. I would recommend Underworks. Now, I know what you're thinking, Underworks and GC2B are kind of expensive, and so are Spectrum Outfitters, but please do not let that make you buy a really cheap binder from Amazon or eBay or any of those like terrible like companies. You can get a binder for like three pounds on Amazon and they're not safe at all. A lot of them have clamps, they've got clips on the side. Your binder won't be binding evenly. It's just not healthy. I just, I just don't. If you're gonna buy a binder, please save up for an actual binder company and not just some crappy Amazon thing. How many binders did I have? Um, Right. I think I had five overall, which is not a lot, and I probably should have had more if I was wearing them every day, because I, I didn't wash them very often. I was manky, I was very depressed. Um, I started off with a crappy Amazon one. Alright, calm down. I started off with a crappy Amazon one. Regret that a lot, it hurt and it didn't bind well. Sorry, my rats are really loud. And then I got a GC2B, uh, that was in an extra small, and then I got bigger, so I got a small. I also had two underworks, which I pretty much rotated. I had about five. Are there any dangers to binding? Yes, of course there are. It's restrictive on your body. If you have asthma, I'm not really sure how much you should be binding. I know people who've broken their ribs because of a binder. Um, I, I got bruised ribs sometimes and I felt manky and horrible. If you're exercising, like running with a binder and you lose your breath, I feel like that's, you know, that's not good at all and things can go badly. What is the maximum time to wear one and does it hurt? Realistically, if you're binding every day for a long period of time, it will hurt. Um, the maximum amount of time to wear a binder, I don't know, different places will tell you different times. I've heard 8 hours from somewhere, I've heard 12 hours from somewhere. Realistically, I know that 8 hours is not a long time, to be honest. If I was told I could only wear it for 8 hours, I would refuse to only wear it for 8 hours because I do not want to be spending the majority of my day without a binder. Realistically, people are going to bind for however long they want to bind, but can I just say that if it's really hurting you that bad, please just take a break, maybe even like a 10 minute break, or if you can, wear a sports bra and baggy clothing, then just, just do it, it's, it's not good. Do you recommend the full tank or the half tank? So, all of my binders were half tank, which meant they stopped halfway down your torso. Full tank ones stop usually at your hips. Um, I, I just, I just prefer half tanks because they're more comfy. How can I buy a binder without my parents finding out? So this is a question I get a lot, and there are lots of ways to get around your parents finding out that you have a binder. Usually, you can only buy binders online, so if you don't have a debit card or you don't have a way of buying something online, then maybe you reach out to a friend, reach out to a family member, reach out to, you know, anyone that could help you that could buy something online, give them cash in person and have them buy you a binder. You could also have a binder delivered to a friend's house so your parents don't have to see your mail. A lot of people get binders from binder giveaways and you can have the binder delivered to someone else's house that you can collect it from. It's pretty easy to hide a binder. There, there must be some place under your bed or like under your cupboard or in your wardrobe that you can hide it that your parents can't find it. Realistically, if they do find it, which my dad found it, he didn't really ask any questions. I think he was scared to ask questions. You can just say it's a sports bra. Which they may or may not believe, but whatever. So those are all the questions I've got on binders today. If you have any other questions, then please comment then. I'll try, I keep dropping my phone. Please comment the questions, I'll try and answer them. But that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If not, I'm sorry. I'm not really. But yeah, have a good day I don't. See you later, losers. Punch. <laughs> Such a weak punch. I'm so ill, guys. I feel ill.